Hi, this is Czech Ladkowski, and welcome to the fourth in our series on guardrails. We're talking about how not to crack up in life. And just as a general reminder, guardrails are a system designed to keep people or vehicles from straying into dangerous and off-limit places. We see them all around us, on bridges, on roads, between lanes, and they're there for our protection. But many of us ask in the life, why do I need guardrails in life? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you listen to anybody talk about pain in their life, talk about a, fast, a past failure of embarrassment and guilt, you will find that there was a place, a time, when they ran through and over a guardrail. And if you listen to counselors, whether they're in the public or private area, if you talk to pastors who do counseling, you'll find that 90% of problems come around sex and money. Last week we talked about sex. This week we're talking about the problem of money. They think, oh, we can't have sex. Sex is outside of bounds. You can't talk about that in the context of church. Well, let me tell you, God is the one who invented it. And when he finished making men and women, he said it was very good. And that included sex under the umbrella of the very good. The other thing people say is, well, the church just wants my money. Let me tell you the other thing. God does not need your money. Did you hear that? God does not need your money. But he is interested in how you and I spend and invest and what we do with our money because that's tied directly to our hearts. So we're going to look at Jesus where he says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. We cannot serve God and things. He says this is a, a, one of the big truths of, of all of life, and he says you can't do both. And he has a couple of three things to tell us, and the first of them is, is that we are not the center of the universe. We may think we are, that it all revolves around me, but he speaks to us and says there's something there's someone bigger than you that you can be connected to that will give your life meaning and purpose. And if we focus in on things, we will either consume them or hoard them. You see, life is like a highway that has ditches on either side. And he puts up guardrails for us and says, hoarding is no good. Neither is consuming. Hoarding says, I'm going to keep, 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 keep. Consuming says, buy, 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 buy. I am never satisfied. I always need more. And both of them are focused around the fact that I am the center of the universe. Greed. I have got to have it. It's an emotional driver. It says, you know what? I need to self-medicate. There's something that I'm not happy with. There's something about my life that's not full. And I'm going to try to fill it full of things. And by the way, I'm probably going to keep God in the back of the car, in the trunk, as the backup plan. I've got him in my hip pocket so that if things really, 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 really go bad, that in the moment of sheer panic, I will I will pray. And somehow God is my genie and he's going to pop out of a bottle and save me in the nick of time, just in time for the last commercial at the end of the episode. Now, there are times where God just marvelously does intervene. He steps into time and space and saves us. And we thank God for that. But most of life is that he has given us his knowledge and wisdom and insight. He says, I want you to choose me. And one of the great ways we get to see that is how we spend our money. Secondly, is he wants us to reorder the priorities of our life when it comes to money. I mean, we have traffic. We've got things coming in and out from all different directions. I got demand to buy this. What about this payment? My credit card, my debit card, my my checking account, all of these things are coming in and it produces stress in my life. God says, I want you to reorder your life to change the priorities because he says the primary thing about money, about things, is that it's got to be giving. Giving is at the top of the pyramid. It's not at the bottom. It's not a leftover. It's the primary thing. It's the first thing. And the reason it's the first thing is, as I get to say, this belongs to you, God. I no longer have responsibility or ownership of this. This belongs to you. 
I'm in a consulting business and that's how I make my money. And I invoice my clients once a month. And the question comes up, okay, I'm going to give a percentage of that off the top. Now, for me personally, the best time to do that is not when the check comes in. It is not when the check clears. I give back to God when I send out the invoice because that says, God, by faith, I'm trusting you that this all comes to you. Secondly, I'm trusting you for them to pay it. And I'm going to order my life around it. You see how giving drives it? Secondly, it's that after we give, we save. Saving is the lost art. It's We don't save anymore. We say, well, what's left over? And then I'll spend it. Or maybe if there's a little left over, I'll help pay down my credit card. We've got to make saving a priority. It's got to be on the list. And then we get to spending. It's not ordering and orchestrating and constraining our spending. That is important. But it comes as third. First, we've got to get the giving settled. Then we get the savings settled. And then we live off of what is left, and that's the spending. And the question is, why? Why do you do this, Chad? I mean, after all, you know, I can consolidate my debts. I can take, I can uh, file bankruptcy. I got ways to do this. Well, I'll take care of it later. But God says there's something I want for you. God wants to give you a gift, wants to give me a gift. And that gift is in the financial independence. I don't have to be a slave to stuff. I don't need to be chained to things. Have you ever met anybody who is only interested in making money, that everything in their life wraps around it? A, they're not really happy people, are they? Not necessarily people you want to be around or people you want your daughter dating. But also, they are hurting themselves because they have this chain around their neck that says, I've got to do this. I'm, I'm just so consumed by it. And he says, God says, I want independence. And the third thing is that we cannot serve these two masters. When we're told we're being yelled at through the internet, through pop-up messages and all sorts of things on Facebook and web pages, buy, 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 buy more stuff. God says, is there enough? Do you have enough? Are you? Can you come to a place of contentment? That's that place of independence. Jesus goes on and says, do not worry about what we shall eat or what we will drink or what we will wear. You see, it's that worrying thing. We get into slavery about worrying about all the things. What about my shirts? What about my shorts? What about my shoes? All of the things God says, I understand them. But if we worry about them, this is really hard news. He calls us pagans. You know, you, he says, how can you be my followers? How can you be coming after me if you're just all consumed about this? He says, you're like a pagan. The pagans run after these things that your heavenly father knows that you need them. Matthew 6, 32. God cares. He's aware. He's not blind to these things. He's not saying, oh, I wonder what he needs. I don't know. Let me think. Let me look. Oh, he needs it. I better do something. God knows way in advance, and he says, there's a big but coming your way. You've been going down this path, this path, all along, worrying about all these things, but God says there's a better way. He says, seek first. Seek first. We need to reorganize and reprioritize our life around giving, not spending. And when we seek first, what? His kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be given to us. We translate these things. If I reorder and you reorder our lives around the priorities that God has, he says, I'm going to take care of you. You're not necessarily going to get the big house on the hill. You're not necessarily going to get the big boat. You're not necessarily going to win the girl or, or get the car. He says, but you'll have contentment. And contentment's worth an awful lot more. He says, give first. We give before we spend. It says, God, I want to make sure that you and what you're concerned about is at the top of my priority list. So I'm going to give first. I'm going to put that on top. Secondly, he says, let's take some baby steps. 
I'm here to encourage you, can we take a baby step when it comes to giving? It needs to be a percentage. An amount is, is not going to do it because our income rises and falls. It says make it a percentage. God says, I really don't think it matters. Some people say, oh, it's got to be 10%, and that's great. I'm happy for them. And maybe for some of you, it's 30%. For some of you, maybe it's 3%. But no matter where we are, we need to start right where we're at. Jesus doesn't say, you got to jump off a cliff when it comes to giving. Start by reordering and reprioritizing these things. He says, also, maybe you need some help. That's why there's this thing called the body of Christ. We can have help with one another. There's a video on the internet about a mother bear reaching over a guardrail and pulling a baby bear over. What a great, what a great video that is. But maybe that's the way it is for you and for me. Maybe you need some help. I needed help to get started in that path towards giving proportionally and doing it off the top. But when it comes to giving, it's really a will make a big difference. You know, Marianne took me outside and said, oh, look, look, I want you to take a picture of this. And I said, take a picture of what? I don't get it. I don't see it. It's just a bunch of sticks. She said, no, 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 it's in there. And she pointed it at me. I said, it's just another stick. And I said, well, let me get something. So I went out, went inside and got a piece of paper and put it behind. Then I could see it was a caterpillar that had hung. It was weaving its cocoon to turn into a butterfly. You see, our giving, the way we give, the way we handle our money, really, really brings us out and makes us distinct from everyone and everything else. All of our culture says what? Get more, get more, get more. The commercials, oh, you gotta have this phone, you need more data in your plan, I need another phone, I need a newer phone, I need the faster thing, I need all of this, I need a better car. And I'm not down with any of those things. But let me tell you, from a priority standpoint, God says, if you make me first, I'll bring peace to your soul. If you'll release that right to me, I will fill it. In describing what is perhaps the best known truth of the Bible about God so loving the world that he gave his only son, God so loved the world that he what? He gave. And what proportion did he give? He gave all. He gave his most precious thing. He gave himself. He gave his son. You want to show God how serious you are about a relationship with him. This is where to go. And maybe you're just sort of got your toe in the water about this Jesus thing. I'm not sure. I would really suggest that this is a way to get started. Say, you know, you don't have to understand it all. You don't have to know it all, but just to say, God, in some way, I want to trust you and I'm willing to give you a little bit off the top. So let's walk together with you. Would you, God, would you walk with me? You've promised to take care of me. And boy, do I need taking care of. Would you pray with me? Our Father and our God, I thank you that your love is great and you gave and you gave, and you gave. Thank you for your word and promise to take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks again for joining us next week, the fifth and final installment in Guardrails. God bless and bye-bye.